A total of 39 analysts, pundits, and critics made the rounds on the Sunday talk shows this morning. Each week, one person gets the last word right here. Today, it's Grover Norquist, president of Americans for Tax Reform and a leading conservative activist. Welcome. Glad to be with you. You just heard the debate about the economy between Steve Forbes and Secretary Reich. Senators have been out all week long talking about this. It is a critical test for the new president, but it's also a defining moment for the conservative movement and the Republican Party. What do they do with this new administration? You saw not one Republican voted for it in the House. Now the debate moves to the Senate. I want to read you something from humanevents.com this past Friday about the challenge here for conservatives and Republicans. It is much to be hoped that the Republicans in the Senate will display similar fortitude referencing the House vote there. That seems unlikely, given the number of senators who think the way to show sophistication and flexibility is to sell out. A sellout of this sort here will hurt the American people and seriously damage their own party. So should Republicans just vote no? Well, Republicans should offer a real alternative, as the Republicans in the House have, reducing those government uh, ch those things the government does, which hurt job creation, high tax rates, long depreciation schedules, and offer, instead of the spending programs, lower taxes and more pro-growth policies. What Obama and Reid and Pelosi want to do is they show up at one side of a lake and put a bucket in and take a bucket of water out. Then the three walk around the other side of the lake, hold a press conference, and pour three buckets of water into the lake and announce they're filling up the lake with water. That's what Robert Reich believes will fill up the lake with water. If you look at that and say, wait a minute, you took three buckets out, you put three buckets in, the lake is the same amount, you take $800 billion out of the economy in taxes or debt, then you wander over the other side of the economy and throw the money up in the air and announce you're stimulating the economy. Every dollar spent by the government only exists because it was taken out of the economy somewhere else. As, as pointed out, uh, Japan did this for 10 years and it was a lost decade. Argentina has done it for 30 or 40 years and it hasn't helped. So you don't want to go that direction. And so as this debate unfolds in the Congress, your party has a new leader, at least yeah. at the Republican National Committee. George W. Bush has gone from town. The Republican National Committee had an election. Michael Steele, the former lieutenant governor of Maryland and an African-American, is the new leader of the Republican Party. I want you to listen to something he said after winning the election. They had to take on the war, uh, Katrina, uh, the bailout. Um, yeah, we'll stop there. Okay. Uh, he's, he's laying the blame there on George W. Bush. Barely to communicate on the war, Katrina, the bailout, will stop there. Is just getting George W. Bush out of Washington, is that enough to revive the conservative movement in the Republican Party? Well, it's step one, because as long as George Bush was president, uh, he was the leader of the modern Republican Party. He spent too much money. He didn't get permanent tax cuts. He spent six years being mayor of Baghdad rather than president of the United States. That's problematic in terms of then looking to him for leadership of the Republican Party or, or the, and, the and conservatives. So, so we only have about a minute left. This moment back in 1993 was quote unquote good for conservatives and the Republicans. Yes. Bill Clinton came to town and then you had the contract with America and Newt Gingrich came in. Is In a condensed version, what are you doing now that in your view will bring that about? Yeah. There are two models. <clears throat> in 1990, George Bush Sr. got together with the Democrats and they spent too much money. He lost the presidency in 92. That's the failed model. Get together and do something bad bipartisanly. The good model is to offer a solid conservative alternative, as Republicans did in 93 and 94, and as they're doing now in the House. In 93 and 94, they refused to join the Clintons in spending too much and taxing too much. They offered an alternative vision of limited government and pro-growth policies. The Republicans right now are wisely moving in that path. The last word, Mr. Grover Norquist, today. We'll have you back on the program as this debate folds out as we go. 